Good morning. I'm thrilled to represent Vanguard today, and I'm excited to share with you Vanguard's journey to the cloud. At Vanguard, our core purpose is to take a stand for all investors, to treat them fairly, and to give them the best chance of investment success. Let me introduce you to our firm. We're a global asset manager. We have 30 million investors. They entrust us with $5.7 trillion of their assets. We offer 450 investment products. We have 17,000 crew. That's how we refer to our employees. We have no physical branches. We're a digital firm. 90% of our client interactions come through digital channels. We have 40 years of lowering the cost to invest. Most importantly, we have industry best client satisfaction results. From an IT perspective, we're big and we're complicated. We have global data centers, mainframes, thousands of servers, lots of storage, thousands of apps, 50,000 endpoints, 5,000 technical staff, and in our business, downtime is not tolerable. Six years ago, Vanguard senior IT leaders set out on a transformation. We knew that if Vanguard was going to stay competitive in the digital age, we needed to be better at the business of IT. We wanted to accelerate the pace of innovation. We wanted to deliver business value at startup speed. Continuous delivery, DevOps, microservices, cloud, new ways of working, CICD, all of these concepts were in play but we knew cloud was the cornerstone to, go, to going fast. We knew it was the linchpin to our success. So we set out on a private cloud journey since we had some concerns about public cloud security. One year into our journey, back in 2015, we sent three of our cloud architects to reInvent. Upon their return, we knew we could not compete with the cloud-based services being delivered by AWS. We also knew that building a private cloud was going to take too long and be too expensive. A quick huddle with our CISO and other senior leaders, we pivoted to pu public cloud, and we selected AWS as our cloud provider. With public cloud as our destination, we quickly formed the cloud construction team, many of whom are in the audience today. <laughs> Thanks, guys. They are full stack in their structure. They are outcome oriented in their mission. Most importantly, they have aligned goals. So how does a big firm like Vanguard with big data centers get to the cloud? What was our starting point? We had a traditional tech stack heavily virtualized. We had big data platforms, monolithic applications. I'm not talking about monoliths that are a million lines of code. We had monoliths that were 30, 40, 50 million lines of code. And we had an APAS running on-prem for our emerging portfolio of microservices. Following a design guideline of security first, commensurate with a heavily regulated asset manager, we built out our accounts, VPCs, and a security apparatus that entailed over 150 security controls. With security in place, we wanted to start moving some of our workloads to the cloud. We started with some of our web apps, our microservices. We moved our APAS. We thought this was the fastest way to start getting some workloads into the cloud. At the same time, we established secure internet connectivity using Route 53 for DNS, AWS's web application firewall, and CloudFront for CDN. We also migrated from VPN access to Direct Connect for improved resiliency and bandwidth between our facilities. Then we wanted to shut down our rapidly growing on-prem big data platforms. We became heavy users of S3 and EMR. Other machine learning capabilities such as Comprehend, Lex, 
SageMaker transcribed and Glue were introduced. More AWS security services were implemented. We used Secret Manager for authentication credentials. We used Macy for discovering and protecting sensitive information. And we used Shield for DDoS protection. We knew we had to get our data closer to the microservices. They were still reaching back to our on-prem data center for their data. Using CDC technology along with Aurora, it allowed us to move our data in a similar schema from our on-prem relational databases. Some of our microservices solution delivery teams wanted access to data in more of a key value structure, so we introduced Dynamo. Using Kinesis for data streaming and Lambda for event-driven data transformation, we get, began moving to DynamoDB. And this put us in a position to eliminate our cloud-based data cache. Our next huge design decision focused on our APAS. We pivoted to ECS on Fargate. As mentioned earlier in Werner's remarks, we got stronger container isolation, we got security out of the box, we got integration with other key services, especially identity and access management. Most importantly to me, the guy that was paying the AWS bill, we got into a pure consumption model. And we hooked ECS on Fargate up to Dynamo and Aurora. We are now starting to drain our microservices from our APAS. We are accelerating the pace of our monolith decomposition. And this should allow us to retire our APAS in the near future. Finally, we started to move the gold copy of bounded context of function and data to the cloud. Recently, we have strategically decided to host our emerging advisory platform on ECS on Fargate. This platform supports our advice services that are increasingly in demand from our clients. So here's our end state, just about a 100% cloud native architecture. So what does Vanguard get out of this? We know we can reduce the cost of compute by at least 30%. We know we can build software 30% faster. We know we can deploy our capabilities 20 times faster. And all this leads to a better ability to innovate. And along the way, we get improved resiliency. Since 1973, Vanguard has been disrupting how investors pursue financial security. Today marks the 17th time Vanguard has been on stage somewhere at reInvent. I'd like to thank AWS for these opportunities. I'd like to thank the Vanguard Cloud Construction Team for making all this possible. And I'd like to thank our investors who entrust us with their assets so that they can enjoy financial security. Thank you. <laughs>